Okay, I asked the question, uh, why are buffalo's heads so large? And I got some interesting responses from the pet forum in Craigslist. The main theme is that they use their he big heads to push the snow aside to get to the grass, the frozen grass underneath. And that's that's interesting. That's how these buffalo have survived all these uh, hundreds of thousands of years or whatever, however long they were around. They were definitely around before the white Americans came, Europeans. And the cows that we, we brought, my, our ancestors uh, brought, uh, don't graze in the in the in the snow. The, the the cows refuse to to pasture in in snow, especially if the grass is frozen. They won't do it. Okay, only buffalo and horses do it. All right, so that is a bit of a challenge uh, for uh, frozen tundras like Wisconsin or Montana. North, South Dakota, just the northern regions. Uh, Washington is not so much of a problem. Um, I'd say it's more of a European climate. It's perfect for cows. All right, but buffalo, they can handle the cold weather pretty good out by themselves. They raise themselves. And I, I saw this awesome website that showed um, buffalo um, surviving a, a terrible winter. All right, the guy was concerned about his buffalo dying in, in this snowstorm, and they turned out to survive. Um, last year or the year before, there, were, there was a farmer uh, in Montana who showed uh, horrendous pictures of, of just piles of his own cows dead from a, a snowstorm. Cows just can't graze very well or keep themselves warm enough, if they're not going to graze in the cold weather or forage through the snow, they're not going to eat, they're not going to generate the extra energy needed to survive the cold weather, and, and they're, they're vulnerable to terrible conditions. I was reading this awesome website, I think I'll just put it in the link below, um, as they said they did a study in Montana where they... Um, uh, exposed, which, I mean, you're going to have issues with negative 40 degree weather anyway, but they studied these cows exposed to negative 40 degrees, all right, and then they in turn studied them at zero degrees, and they found that um, the cows ate only a half an hour each day in the negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, only a half an hour, um, you know, they, they need to eat a lot more than that. Uh, the cold just puts a stop to their, to their, uh, their digestion because, uh, they say it's, in this article, it's all in the rumen, which it's, it's about their gut bacteria. Gut bacteria works a little different in warm weather as a, in, in comparison to cold weather. And in general, colder weather is going to slow down most, practically, you know, 99% of the gut bacteria anyway. That, that cold weather will slow it all down. And that's the same for humans. I mean, we don't have rumens, but we, we also have gut bacteria, and it responds to different temperature conditions as well. All right, it'll slow down in the colder weather. So, I thought it was... It was interesting, and the part of the reason that I asked why the buffalo's heads were so large is because I saw, I made a little video, I saw a black-tailed deer, and I was like, what's so different about the black-tailed deer from a white-tailed deer? And apparently, uh, the black-tailed deer are more um, adept at uh, b jumping up on cliffs to get away from their, their predators, whereas white-tailed deer... Uh, got used to uh, planes, wide expanse of planes, so running fast is more of a, an advantage for white-tailed deer, whereas bouncing and jumping up on uh, ledges and cliffs is more of an advantage for black-tailed deer. And apparently if you um, uh, bred them two together, uh, their child would be very confused and would have poor survival skills because they wouldn't they wouldn't really excel at either jumping or running fast. Uh, so I guess yeah, it, it, it tends to have uh, uh, 
poor chance of survival. So, okay, I'm done.